All right, today is the day. Not the day we caught the COVID-19 virus, luckily. Hopefully that never comes about. But today is the day we made another step forward on the airtight project. We actually got the rear upper control arm completed. Now, if you remember, before we were going to cast some of these components, and I'll show you right up here, that's what it was going to look like. That was the clay that we were building up, ready to take some molds off of it. But we decided, and if you remember in another video, I talked about this, of switching a lot of those cast suspension components and switching to making them out of steel. So uh, here it is, us building the upper control arms out of steel. Let's go take a look. So along with the water jet cut parts, I needed to get some heavy wall tubing and do some machining to accept some of the other fittings that are going to go into this assembly. Now I'm boring out a piece of that pipe here to accept the ball joint. Not shown here is also a couple of pieces of pipe had to be turned and bored out slightly to accept some urethane bushings for the pickup points. Now all in all, between all these control arms and the hubs, there's a lot of pieces of pipe and uh, fittings that need to be created. True them up and bore them out. And here's the collection. You'll see more of those in the other assemblies as they go along in the next few weeks. But now it's time to assemble this thing. Now these water jet cut parts have little tabs and notches that make them all fit together like a nice puzzle. And along with that and a socket I found that seemed to be the right width, able to clamp that on one end to hold the open end in position. The other end, like I said those notches will hold it together. Just a matter of clamping it and then we'll also check it to make sure that everything is lined up. There always is the option of a little shifting. Got a little piece of pipe here. Check that notch. Little tab's going to go in there. That seems to fit. And the first thing we're going to do is weld the little square tab that centers right there in the middle. Those of all off camera were beveled a little bit to give me some gap for penetration on these welds. And once that little tab in the center is welded, I can actually take the clamps apart. Everything should hold together just fine. And then I'm able to position it a little bit better. Now this assembly is made out of two pieces of heavier sheet metal and a quarter inch steel plate the bushings on one end and the ball joint on the other. Little tab on the end just holds the spacing on that end where the shock absorber will hook. The shock absorber itself will actually hold the spacing as well. Now the part I turned for the ball joint, nice fit, but you're going to have to hammer it into position so it's nice and flush on the one side. Like I said, off video, I beveled all these pieces so that I have a little bit of a gap to fill to get a good penetration on the weld. Tack this in a few places and then try to make a nice, continuous, good weld. I'm always amazed when I see these guys welding pipe and how beautiful things are. And I know with pipe, it's nice to have some kind of a rotisserie system that turns it so you can get a nice, even weld. But on assembly like this, you got so many different angles. It's just a matter of always setting it up and holding it in a position where you can get to the parts well. Now this is the two pieces of pipe that are going to hold the urethane bushings. You'll notice I've got a big piece of heavy solid stock going through it. Not only to hold them in parallel, but also to absorb the heat if I try to weld a little too hot and the weld tries to go through. It'll cool it off and won't get the kind of bubble or bulging on the backside. You might want that on a good penetrating weld, but in this case I want it to be nice and smooth on the inside to accept those bushings. Then I'm going to do a little pre-grinding to clean things up before I put on a piece of 3 16 by 3 quarter flat bar that's going to strengthen this thing up a bunch. Now you might see in this that there's a problem in that where these two pieces of sheet metal come down and meet that quarter inch plate, 
even though it's nice thick quarter inch, it's still got the possibility of bending where those two pieces meet. So I'm going to take this piece of flat bar, tack weld it on one side, and then bend it around and basically create an I-beam out of that quarter inch plate. So when you have two pieces of uh, perpendicularly opposing materials welded together, like I said, they create an I-beam. If you want to look at it that way. And that'll uh, strengthen this thing quite a bit. Once I got that wrapped around, clamped in place, tack it and go ahead and get a nice continuous bead all the way around that thing. Now this thing's almost done, but I noticed that these, where the sheet metal comes down and this flat bar wraps around, made kind of a little uh, triangular pocket that I didn't like. I knew that that's just going to be a place to collect dirt and grease. So I cut myself a couple of pieces of sheet metal. I'm going to weld those and fill that gap. So I'm going to go ahead and weld it on the top. But you'll see they kind of stick out. So once I get the top side welded, it's a matter of bending the sheet metal in place. The welds will hold it while I do that bend. Now I thought, well, I'll get the, a piece of center punch and bend those pieces of sheet metal over. Thought it'd be nice and accurate to do it this way. I think I ended up finding out that just to hit you with the hammer, always go to the bigger hammer. Once that's bent over, get it in a good position, like we said. Weld it up. And other than that, this thing is all assembled. So take it over to the sandblaster, get it cleaned up. And through the magic of video editing, already it's done. Cleaned up, ready for powder coating. And also by the magic of video editing, the powder coating is done as well. And sorry you didn't get to see that, but it was a kind of a lot of cold, rainy with some hail going on outside. So I didn't take the camera outside. Always tried to powder coat outdoors because I don't have a ventilation system for the powder coating. But there it is. Also by the magic of video editing, you didn't wait the 20 minutes for the cure. Now this is an Eastwood color called black diamonds, kind of a metallic silver sprinkled into the black, beautiful color. Time to do the final assembly. Now these are some urethane bushings. They're actually out of a Pontiac Fiero. I've used this on a different project and I like these that they have the kind of a shoulder. They press in by hand, but once you put these bushing pins in, they'll expand the urethane out enough to hold that nice and tight against the steel. Of course, in urethane bushings, the rotation on the pickup point is at that pin rather than the bushing inside the steel. So they use a little bit of a thick, thicky grease. Once they pressed in, the bushings are in time to go on to the ball joint. Now out to the hydraulic press, I've got a piece of aluminum pipe on the bottom side. That's going to be a little bit softer. Hopefully that'll protect my powder coating. The ball joint can fit down inside of it. Piece of steel pipe. I think it might even be a, just a socket on top of that. Press it in. Once it seats flat, you got that pop. It's in. That all seemed easy. It actually took a little bit of work. But there it is. The ball joint pressed into place. A little snap ring goes on the other side. The zerk fitting and the boot. And it's ready. And here they are in their finished glory. Not only exciting to have these done, but progress continues. All right, there you have the rear upper control arm. Of course, it is a rocker controlling inboard mounted coilover shock springs. We will also be working on other suspension components, the other control arms and the hubs. Got all the metal cut for those, and we will be welding those up, finishing those in the next few weeks. Kind of intermixed with um, fiberglassing parts, and of course, 
to you working on laminations in the tub to build that monocoque. Anyway, I hope you're all doing well out there and staying away from the virus. Hope you're being able to get some things done. I, of course, thought we'd really be pulling lots of time on the car project, but all this free time has made it so people are asking me to help them out with other projects. But we're getting more done as it is anyway. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Come back and see us again. I'm going to put a link up here at the end of this video so you can go and, if you're new here, see the beginning of this project, a couple of videos that will help you see what we've been doing and kind of get you into the flow of the whole project. But anyway, thanks for watching.